Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tea Studio. Today I'm sharing with you day five of our daily art journaling challenge from Art Joy of Sharing Art Community on Facebook. If you haven't joined yet, please do. You can go down below the video and there'll be a link for you to join up and you can play along with this in this challenge and our other challenges like Pick a Stick and Mood Board and all those. And it's a very welcoming, happy community where people share. So come on over and join us. Today's prompt for our hashtag AJOS Peculiar Persona Challenge is Edgar Hedgerman. And so that sounded like a hedgehog to me. I have this little hedgehog that I got off of unsplash.com, which is a royalty-free photo place that you can download and print photos. This has been printed uh, with a laser printer so that it doesn't smear or run. Um, this little image as well as lots of others are available in the group. I did a, a collated collage sheet collection and also uh, Peg, the other owner of the, um, the group, also added some collage fodder for you guys to use for this challenge. And so you can use this hedgehog too if you want to. You don't have to, obviously. There's so many options for ways to make characters, and that's what this this challenge is about, making characters in your art journal pages and then, you know, making your little character thinking about what, what they look like, what they are thinking about, what their story is. Um, fun stuff to do in your art journal page takes you away from the reality of the real world and lets you do something fun and creative and relaxing um, for a short amount of time each day. That's what we're all about. And then of course you can obviously share what you make and um, you know inspire other people as well. You could even make videos if you want. Everybody can, but you don't have to. <laughs> That's for crazy people like Peg and I. I'm actually making, trying to make a video every single day this month. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you should do that. Turn on your notification bell so you know when the fresh new video comes out. And there should be a video for every single art journal page all through this month. And then after that, of course, it's November and December. I'll be slowing down a bit because, uh, you know, those are, those are busy times in our lives. So I, I won't be able to make a video every day. Um, but yeah. Let's talk about Edgar Hedgerman. I decided to use that little cutout, but I was also thinking about, um, I don't really think hedgehogs live in Arizona, where I live, but we have a lot of varieties of hedgehog, cac hedgehog cactus. And so I decided that my little Edgar Hedgerman's probably coming over to Arizona because he got tired of rolling into a ball in order to save himself from foxes and wolves and all the other predators, you know, his job is to roll into a little prickly ball. So, you know, nobody wants to bite him, but he got tired of that. Maybe he's getting some arthritis, you know, I don't know. So he decided to just come over to Arizona to the Sonoran desert and hide among the hedgehog cactuses. Why are they called hedgehog cactuses? It's because they have a bunch of spines. <laughs> These are very spiny cactuses. I have one in the backyard of my house and it is a crimson hedgehog cactus. There's lots of different kinds, tons of different kinds, but it has small sections that are like little, little barrels kind of, and then it blooms in the spring and it gets kind of like a, a small round thing on it. And then that opens up into a very bright red bloom that kind of looks like they're very dry looking like straw flowers. Like you would think maybe they, they don't have a lot of water in them there. Um, I've never tried to pick them because these things are very spiny. I mean, more spiny than all cactuses and pretty much everything in the Sonoran Desert has, has thorns on it. But some things have more thorns than others. And this particular plant has just a ton, a ton of little spikes all over it. So that's probably why it was named Hedgehog Cactus because, and I'm sure it has another fancy name. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it'll have some Latin name that has nothing to do with hedgehogs. But hedgehogs are spiny all over. 
I did have a friend in the art world. I never met her in real life, but her daughter had a hedgehog as a pet. And apparently they've become popular as pets. Um, it was the cutest little thing. It was tiny and she could hold it in her hands, like in a little cup of her hands. And I don't know. It was really cute. But I I don't know the, anything about hedgehogs as a pet or if that's an ethical thing to do or not. I mean, um, I did when I was looking for hedgehogs in Arizona to find out if, they, if there was any hedgehogs living in the Sonoran Desert, besides the cactuses, there was an ad for a place here in Arizona that breeds them. And so I guess you can get them as pets in the state that I live in. I'm not sure if you can in every state. This uh, person I'm talking about lived in Oregon. So she got that little hedgehog for her daughter. It was a very cute little thing. I don't know if it's, it's like a guinea pig or something. And I don't know if those spikes are very spiny because you would think you wouldn't want to, you know, porcupine. I know I, I'm familiar with porcupines because we had them in Oregon where I grew up and they would hurt you in a couple of, one time our dog got porcupine spines in its nose and we had to take it to the vet and have them removed because they're, they're like cactus spines. They get in there with a little hook and then they're hard to get out. So anyway, back to what I'm doing. I decided to make my hedgehog live in the land of, of hedgehog cactuses. And so I drew the shapes with a pencil really quick. This is not a detailed drawing. This is a quick sketch. And then I went over it with a India ink brush pen. And then after I had all that done and I was ready to color it, I decided what should I color with? Oh, well, I have this new set of Schmincke, um watercolors in super granulating watercolors that I want to play with. And I ha just haven't had a chance to play with them yet. I bought them because the colors, it's, it was, it's from a person who has a shop on Etsy called Watercolor Hoarder, which I think is really funny. And she, t she gets the the watercolors and then she puts them in the half pans and puts them in her own little container and so this is the set forest and the set tundra each of those set color sets from Schmincke has five colors so these two are the the, the combination of this 10 colors in these two sets from Schmincke um, perfect colors for the desert and that's the reason that I bought them they are exactly the colors that you see when I walk out, you know, when I'm walking around outside. It's got the rusty colors. It's got purples and grays. It's got lots of different types of greens and blues um, in, you know, that, that muted family. And also, I love granulating watercolors. I think Schmincke might be German, maybe. I'm not sure, but they're definitely not made in the United States. And not exactly super easy to find, I don't think. So when I was wanting them, I think it was probably watching somebody um, using the super granulated ones. And I'm like, I want that. But then to find it for a reasonable price, I, I couldn't find it for a reasonable price. Very expensive because it's an imported high quality art product. So then when I went to Etsy and I found that she was making her own little pans and selling them for a better price, I, I got them then. Um, it took a long time to get here. She says it takes about three weeks. It took more like five weeks to get here from, I think, Singapore, if I remember correctly. So, um, you know, on Etsy, anybody can sell on Etsy. It could be from anywhere and you could you probably need to look into that when you go to buy something off Etsy. It's not necessarily coming quickly, but they did come and they're, you know, exactly what I expected. I think they're really nice watercolors. One thing I did uh, it, that I should have done differently, and I will tell you, do as I say, not as I do. When, when I thought about coloring, I didn't think about um, that I was going to use watercolor and the paper in this book is kind of like manila cardstock. Um, this is a Dilusions Dialogue journal 
it's not watercolor paper. And so I, so I decided to put some watercolor ground. I have some core from golden watercolor ground for turning a paper that's not a watercolor paper into something more absorbent. That's the whole purpose of it. But if I thought ahead, I would have put the watercolor ground down like a gesso. That's what I should have done. But I didn't because I wasn't thinking about watercoloring when I thought about this whole process. So then I had to go back in and paint it on. And because it's not clear, I could have just painted over the whole thing unless I wanted to, you know, ab obliterate the lines that I just spent all that time making. Well, I didn't want to do that. So <laughs> I just kind of, I painted it on and around, which, of course, it should have just been a, an easy slop, slop, slop like gesso before I ever started making any any marks on there at all. So, I mean, is that something I would do? Yeah, is that something you might do too? Uh, maybe, you know, I'm not spending a lot of time with these daily art journaling pages thinking about what I'm going to do because they're quick, they're fun, they're for, um, they're for, for practicing your art, for having some fun, for getting away from, you know, your your day-to-day -day stuff and having a little playtime. It's not, oh, okay, I have to think about this. What am I going to do today? What, you know, what's my art going to be? That's that's not what art journaling is about. It's just supposed to be uh, open up the book, do some stuff. So I didn't think about the watercolor until later. Um but man, this watercolor set is exactly, exactly the colors I needed. The only thing I didn't have was a really bright crimson. So I have another little set of uh, Daniel Smith colors. I've got the, the cool and the warm primaries. And then a few other colors that I really enjoy from Daniel Smith in that little case. I bought the tubes and I put the, the watercolor in there myself. So I used the cool and the warm um reds from Daniel Smith to do the flowers and then I also used the um, the warmer yellow I don't remember the exact colors but the warmer yellow to do the centers so then to finish it I need to make a bunch of spikes <laughs> and I thought about doing it with my Posca pins because that's my go-to right I just grabbed the Posca pins I've got the black and the white up here on the desk and no big deal but watercolor does have a residue. So if you're going to go with a Posca pen, you can get that residue on the tip and then you have to write it off. And I thought, well, why, why would I even bother doing that? You know, what works really great with watercolor um, for mixed media is pencils. And so I grabbed this set of Prismacolor um, colored pencils that I have in the drawer that I hardly ever get out. And I used kind of a dark sepia toned brown and then the white and drew on, I mean, I'm doing it super quick. It's not like I'm like going spike, 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 spike. I'm just going really fast. And the reason that I used the brown first was to give a shadow because when the light hits the cactus spines, they are they become very white especially on this plant particularly they're very very white they're bright um, they besides being spiky they are also kind of like fingernails if you were to really get one off and feel it it feels kind of like keratin from your fingernails they're kind of bendy and they are a little bit translucent so not completely see-through but they're translucent so when the light hits them they do have a reflective quality, but they also are opaque enough that they cause a shadow. So by putting the brown on first and then putting the white over the top, it gave the look of what you would actually see. So then I glued down my little hedgehog guy, which I cut out, and I have some desert type stuff down here, some sand and rocks. Um, like I see out in the wash, uh, one, one wash that we like to walk in is called Big Wash, and it's just this very wide, dry, um, deserty river. 
And along the edges of it, it has got the most beautiful rocks. They're smooth. They're all different colors, purples, grays, reds, pinks. And so I colored my rocks in the way that I would see them out in Big Wash. Um, I haven't walked out there for a while. I need to get my kid and go do some walking out there. Now that it's not 104 degrees, <laughs> I can actually stand it. So time to start walking again. So I have my little hedgehog standing in the sand and rocks and um, glued it down with a Yoohoo glue stick. I'm finishing up my spikes on my plants. Pretty happy with that. Um, I think it's cute. And I did use the pencils here and there just to add a little bit more. You, you could really do a whole thing. I mean, you could do a whole serious painting combining these pencils with watercolors. I think it would be really awesome. You know, some serious art. This is just fun, fun art. So I'm not being so careful and fussy and uh, just I'm adding a little bit of pink highlight to the flowers quickly, scribbly, you know, not not fussy. Just ch -ch -ch -ch, go, go, go. Just like that. That's the noise it makes. Ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> so then I thought Mr. Hedgerman really needed to have a personality. So I gave him a top hat because he's very proper, very proper gentleman. So I gave him a little top hat to give him just a little something, something. And then I felt like I needed to integrate the picture into the background. They're very different. You know, you've got a detailed actual photograph versus this whole drawn and painted thing going on. So I decided to add some black. Um, this is the India ink pen with the, the brush pen that I used originally. Some little spikes around and then go back over the top with the white Posca pin and add the highlights to them. Um, this gives the photo a little bit more of an illustrative look. And also, uh, when you're cutting out something like a hedgehog, it's annoying. You don't want to sit there and cut every little teeny tiny spike. Oh, you know, you, you cut some of them if there's a big, a big break. But otherwise, you're just kind of cutting around. So it also gives that more spiky look to add the lines. And I add some highlights to his nose and his whiskers and his eye so that they show up from the photograph a little bit better because they, were, they weren't that obvious. And then just throwing on some highlights with my white Posca pen, acrylic paint pen. And I think it's pretty cute. I think it's pretty cute. I hope you're enjoying this video and this challenge. If you are, leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said, I'm trying to make a video every day. So if you subscribe and turn on your notification bells, it will tell you that there's a new fresh video for you to watch for art journaling all the month of October 2021. Also, when I'm finishing the videos, I put... Uh, videos from the past years from this challenge. Uh, we've been doing daily art, art journaling with our own prompts for seven years. So I try to put the one from the day in a previous year up in the I card and at the end. So you can look at those. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.